Hey groups, excited to be with you guys again today. Uh, we just started a series on Revelation, and I'm really excited to see how you guys kind of answer some questions around Revelation. Uh, what we talked about this past weekend is that a lot of people tend to avoid Revelation as a whole. There's some images that people are kind of nervous about. They don't quite know what it means, so they just avoid the whole book in general. Uh, but at the Foundry, we don't want to avoid those types of things because we believe all Scripture is God-breathed. And John the Apostle, Apostle wrote this book, and Jesus kind of said some stuff to John that the churches needed to know. So we're going to be diving into all of these seven different churches over the next few weeks, and I'm excited to see how your conversations uh, kind of flow through some of these things. So let's jump in right away. Kids, you guys are first. All right, kids, so like I just said, we're going to be focusing on the seven churches of Revelation primarily. And what's interesting about these seven churches is that they're, a lot of them were actually young Christians. This book was written not long after Jesus had died on the cross. So these, these books were starting to go around and new Christians were becoming Christians every single day. So they were new believers. And Jeremiah, who is one of the prophets in the Old Testament, has something that he kind of writes a book that has some similarities to Revelation. And I want you guys to start by reading this um, out of Jeremiah 2, verses 1 to 2. So read that and then start this back up again. All right, so your first question here, before we, before we talk about Jeremiah, your first question I want you to think about is what was one of your favorite Bible verses or Bible stories as you were growing up? What did you, what did you always ask your parents, can we read this story? Maybe you had one of those. So kids, do you remember the excitement around those stories that you just shared? Maybe it was the first time you heard it and thought, oh, that is a really good story and you wanted to hear it over and over again. I remember growing up, Jonah was the story that I wanted to hear all the time. It was a story of a man getting swallowed by a fish. I mean, it was just, just a crazy story to think about and I loved hearing those kinds of stories. And in a similar way, you see, Jeremiah challenges his listeners to remember the devotion that they had as youths. And you guys are in that age. You know the excitement that can come from hearing a story for the first time. And in a similar way, the church was often hearing some of these stories for the first time about Jesus. So Jeremiah is kind of asking, hey, remember that devotion you had as your youth. So you guys kind of, kind of have it great right now because you, you can think earlier how that devotion and that excitement is right on the tip of your tongue. So knowing that, here's the next question. What does devotion mean for you? Think about that word specifically, devotion. What does that mean for you? And before I ask this last question, I want you guys to know that as kids, you have a really important role. There are so many times in the Bible that talk about youth and kids and how Jesus wanted the youth to come up to him. And you guys have a really important role. So knowing that, I want to ask you this next question. How can you show your friends, parents, and other people around you how they can have excitement, that same excitement that we devote to ourselves as youth for the stories in the Bible? How can you show that to other people around you? All right, kids, that's all for your questions this week. Thanks so much for engaging in this stuff. And hey, you guys have a great week. All right, adults, it is your turn. 
Uh, first question here. What concerns do you have about studying the book of Revelation? Because sometimes it's kind of terrifi- terrifying. And are there reasons that you avoid reading it sometimes? Talk about that amongst yourselves. Question number two, is there any part of your spiritual life that feels like an obligation? Maybe it's something that you wake up in the morning and you just check it off the list to start your day. Is there anything in your spiritual life that feels like an obligation? Next, I want you guys to read together from Revelation 1, 1 through 3, and then click play again when we'll ask some questions about it. So towards the end of these verses in Revelation, John explains that blessed are the people who read these words. Yet he doesn't just stop there. He said, blessed are the people who take these words to heart. So we need to also take them to heart. So here's the questions I have for you in this. Number three, do you think that just reading the word is enough? So just reading the Bible is enough? Or are you actually going to allow the spirit to work to transform you in a way of Christ? And I want you to actually be telling the truth when you answer this around the circle or whatever you're in. Do you think that just reading the word is enough? Wrestle with that together. Be honest with each other. One thing I love about groups is the, the honesty that sometimes happens in them. I know in my group specifically, there's a lot of great times where we're intentional about intentional about what we're going to be doing. But sometimes my problem is I forget what I'm supposed to do after I leave groups. And I don't know if you're anything like me in that, but think about those things that I, as I ask this last question. Number four, how can you as a group hold each other accountable to some of the things that are brought up in your groups? Because like I said, there's a lot of good things that happen, but sometimes we forget about them after we leave that close centeredness that we have with the group. So what would it look like for you guys as a group to hold each other accountable? Maybe it's texting each other. Maybe it's sending a phone call. Hey, you said you were going to do this week. Did you actually do that thing? Right? Talk to each other about some ideas about how you can hold each other accountable to some things that are going on in your life. All right, guys, it is time for the group vine. And since we're starting the Revelation series, we want to do something a little bit different. And we want to make groups and us a little bit more conversational in some of the things that we do. Because we often just send you guys questions to answer, and we don't often get what questions you might have out of the series. So we want to change that for this series. So what I'm asking you guys to do is come up with a question or two that you think of during the message or during groups or something you want to know a little bit more about and send those in by Monday night. I'm gonna, we're we're going to be working on some of those then. And even if your group doesn't meet before Monday night, you can still send those questions in. It doesn't really matter what week you do because we'll still be spending some time on them. So we'd love some of those questions. We're going to be doing something special with those. And we'll be excited to answer some of those questions that you have coming in. So make sure that your groups focus on a few questions that you're dealing with. And we'll love to have some conversation about that. So thanks for sticking around for this group, Vine. I can't wait to see how this series works in your life. (music) 